Hi, this is Ruth Backlund from Energy Work Smile Fascial Release. I wanted to talk to you today about the different kinds of stretches that are out there. Um, I know when people come into my office, they get confused as far as, you know, what kind of a stretch they should be doing. They're told different things from different people and, and there's probably reasons why. Um, there's all different kinds of stretches and how you do them, why you do them, um, is very different. Um, so if, you know, we're talking from a um, fitness perspective versus a clinical correction perspective, there's some pretty dramatic differences between how you want to stretch. So I'm going to talk about four of them today, um, and then I'll do a quick little demonstration of what each of those look like and um, some examples of when you would want to use them. So the first one is probably the most common. It's a static stretch. So that's where, you know, we're really trying to lengthen some of the muscles nice and gradually. Um, those are some short stretches, usually 10 to 30 seconds. Um, the times that you generally want to do the static stretches are just a little bit before a workout, um, but those are really best served after a workout. When those muscles are nice and warm, you know, after you've gone for a nice walk, that's a really good time to do some what I call static stretches, okay? Then there's what's called a passive stretch. And passive means that you're really not doing a whole lot physically to make that stretch happen. There's a tool that's doing it for you, um, like a, a stretching band, or maybe you're working with a trainer and the trainer is actually moving you, or a therapist is actually moving you into a stretch and holding you there. Um, a similar kind of thing could be anywhere from 10 to 90 seconds, um, but it, there's, there's something mechanically happening um, to make that stretch happen. It's not just your own body weight, not just a lengthening um, with a natural body movement okay so a third stretch is one that you'd see a lot with a lot of um, exercise warm-ups so if you've ever gone to a group class um, uh, something of that nature there's usually a warm-up period where you do some dynamic stretches and dynamic stretches are meant to prepare you for moving much more intensively so they're like build-ups to what your workout routine is going to be so if you're in kickboxing you might do some you know punches in the air you know some jabs some crosses maybe some uppercuts or or hooks um, those are some nice warm-up um, routines for your arms if you're doing something with the legs you know it might be um, you know marching in place something of that nature it might be doing some step lunges some walking lunges things of that nature just to warm up the lower body a little bit so you think of those as exercises but in fact they're actually it's a warm-up stretch a dynamic stretch to get your body ready for that more intense workout okay um, the last stretch um, is actually kind of a point a and point b um, it's called myofascial release and some people use myofascial release as an athletic type stretch where people will use a foam roll or a ball or some type of um, mechanism, some bumpy ball rollers, things that are out there and they're massaging very actively um, into those areas. So, you know, um, TheraBands are real common, you know, to roll tissue back and forth, using the foam roll on IT bands, rolling back and forth. Um, those are soft tissue mobilization, myofascial release stretches. Um, again, those are all around activity and fitness, okay? When you talk about a corrective stretch, a corrective stretch is one that's uh, called myofascial release. And that's where you need to stay in a stretch for at least 90 seconds, three to five minutes is actually better to get a longer release. And so that's really trying to open up space that's been constricted, not from a recovery from a workout or getting ready for a workout, but really to correct what is really tight and holding you out of place in your body. So those are the different kinds of stretches. So I'm gonna do a quick little demo for you of what each of them look like. Um, I'm not gonna hold the myofascial release stretch um, for five minutes for you, that'd be pretty boring, um, but I'll at least give you an example of what those stretches look like. So the first one will be a static stretch. Again, that's 10 to 30 seconds. You know, you can repeat that two or three times. Best done after a workout, but you can do it a little bit beforehand as well. Um, passive stretching, which is somebody else is assisting you or you're using a tool to facilitate that stretch. Um, a dynamic stretch, which is more of a moving stretch, um, preparing you for an activity, so you're amping up those those type of um, movements as that dynamic stretch. And then the myofascial release stretches, both like soft tissue mobilization and then the extended myofascial release corrective stretch.
So I'm going to give you a demonstration of all four of those, or five of those, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so this is a demonstration of what a static stretch is. So again, a static stretch is about 10 to 30 seconds. You can alternate on both sides of the body. But basically, you're just lengthening a muscle. So here I'm lengthening my hamstring, okay? Not putting pressure up here, although I could. I could add and actually do a little bit more to my my gastrocnemius here, but I'm just really stretching my hamstring. So this is considered a lengthening stretch or a static stretch of the hamstring muscle, okay? Now, if I wanted to make this a passive stretch, what I could do is I could add a tool. So this would be an example of a passive stretch where I'm using a band to stretch part of my leg muscles, okay? So what I do is I would wrap the band around my foot and I'm just going to add some tension with my arms and that's going to give me a stretch. It's considered a passive stretch because I'm not intentionally lengthening them with my body, but I'm using a mechanism to do that, a tool or, you know, if I had a trainer with me and could actually raise my leg and stretch my leg a little bit more, um, that would be considered a passive stretch. Okay, now for a dynamic stretch, a dynamic stretch is again, it's a preparation for something that's bigger, a more intense workout. So if I was gonna do some upper body work today, you know, I would probably start out with some, some stretches, dynamic stretches with my shoulders and arms, okay? So just reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching, and I could repeat that. That's gonna warm up and engage those shoulder muscles, okay? Now, when I went to my kickboxing routine this morning up at nine round, you know, some of the things that I would probably want to do is warm up some of those muscles I'm going to use for punching, okay? So if I'm going to do uppercuts, those might be some warm-ups in place. If I'm going to do some jabs and crosses, I could do those through the air, okay? Jab and cross, jab and cross, or a hook, or a hook, or an uppercut, or an elbow. Those are all movements that I could make without hitting anything and I can do them nice and slow just to get the blood flowing, just to get some extra oxygen going and loosen up those muscles. So that's an example of, actually several examples of dynamic stretches which are really meant to just warm up the body to prepare you for something more. So a myofascial release um, soft tissue mobilization technique is to use something like a TheraBand roller. Um, you can use a foam roller. I know a lot of people, a lot of runners especially, like to stretch out their IT bands, you know, loosen things up a little bit with a, a foam roller on the side of their legs. But so with a TheraBand roller, this is a, this is a myofascial release, just moving things around, breaking up those, um, you know, tight muscles after a workout working out some of those kinks, just kind of loosening things up a bit, okay? So very different kind of stretch. It's more of a, just a moving, moving stretch just to kind of move things around and break up some of that scar tissue or, you know, some of those tight muscles. So that's more of the, you know, activity related um, soft tissue mobilization type of myofascial release. Now, if we're talking about corrective myofascial release, you know, this, you can definitely add this in here. This is a good thing to kind of loosen things up a bit, but true myofascial release is to lengthen and hold in positions to let the tissue open up over an extended period of time. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So with a myofascial release stretch, um, I personally don't like to work on my IT bands with a full foam roller. It's, it's too intense for me. It's intense for a lot of people. Um, I tend to use a half foam roll. Okay, it's just a smaller version. It's cut in half. Or even a swim noodle works. You know, you cut that into pieces and you can use that as well. It's not as intense. Um, with myofascial release, um, corrective stretches, you need to stay there for a long period of time. So you're not skipping over the tissue like you would be with the soft tissue mobilization type of myofascial release. You really need to be able to sink and relax into the tissue. So um, that's why I like to choose something that's not quite as high, not as intense. So a swim noodle works really well or the half foam roll works as well too. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like.
and basically I'm going to find a spot that's a little tight and I'm just going to hang out here. I'm going to hang out here for a minimum of 90 seconds. Um, really three to five minutes is better. So sometimes when I'm watching TV at home, relaxing, something like that, that's a good time to, you know, put in a, a half foam roll or use your swim noodle or even one of the little therapy balls works pretty well as in those tight spots as well. So again, you're going to just going to want to hang out there. And so that's what you would do for a myofascial release corrective stretch. So I hope you found that helpful. Now you know what the differences are between those four stretches and the different times you can use them. So again, I'll run through them really quickly. A static stretch, 10 to 30 seconds. You, know, you can alternate on the different sides. And that's really good you know, for a post-workout stretch. Um, and it's meant for lengthening those muscles after they're nice and warm. You can do it short, you know, little short bits of it prior to a workout as well, but after a stretch is best. Passive is where you're using a tool like a band or a trainer is helping to stretch something for you. And those tend to be a little bit longer, you know, 10 to 90 seconds. Then you've got the dynamic stretches, which are the actions. Those are the moving ones, right? Where you're warming up, getting ready to do something bigger. And then you have the myofascial stretches. So the ones that are related to more fitness are the, you know, more soft tissue mobilization, they're active movements, it's not long holds, and it's really meant to break up tissue, um, you know, like after a run or after working out and you've got some tight spots in your legs and stuff. Um, so usually a foam roller or TheraBand roll, something like that is, is a common thing that people use for that soft tissue mobilization. And then the corrective stretches around myofascial release, long holds in the body, um, minimum of 90 seconds, three to five minutes is better. You can even hold it for, you know, 10, 15 minutes in a spot to get a more corrective stretch. So um, that's the uh, five stretches I wanted to share today. And hopefully you got some uh, good use out of that information and know when to use them and how long to hold them. So you're doing them properly. Thank you. Have a good day.